Hello, I'm Fiona Boy and I'm from St Albans Pottery and today I'm going to tell you a few things about my job. Actually, I've got three jobs. My first job is I'm a potter, which means I make mugs and bowls and various things that you can use. And here's a picture of me selling my creations at St Albans Market. I'm a pottery teacher and outside lockdown I do after school clubs at local schools. And I also run at other workshops as well as occasional birthday parties. And over lockdown I have set up the Make It Home Pottery Club where I've created YouTube videos and delivered cray kits to families all round St Albans. I'm also a ceramic artist which means I make all kinds of things out of clay that are not very useful but they're rather fun and sometimes quite gorgeous. A lot of my work is doing experiments, testing things, trying things, trying new materials and seeing what works and what is beautiful. And once I have a body of work I can then exhibit it and sell it through galleries and exhibitions. So as human beings, we have been making pottery for 25,000 years. Uh, the oldest pottery has been found in China from um, about 25,000 years ago. Now there's many things that are made out of clay. Can you think of any? In your kitchen, there's tiles against the wall. In your bathroom, it's the bath, the toilet, the sink. You might also find clay on your roof as roof tiles. The bricks, the bricks of your house, they're also made out of clay. You also use clay, of course, for cups and plates. You will also find ceramics is used to make ceramic armour, both on uh, military vehicles and on police vests. And it's also used on the cones, the nose cones of spaceships. The basic idea of pottery is that you find clay that you dig in from the ground and then you make it into a shape and you then put it in some heat and what the heat does is it changes it from mud into ceramic. With the clay, you can make all kinds of different things and you can use all kinds of different tools. The most important tools are your fingers. The usual way of making are pinch pots, coil pots, slab pots, and on the wheel. So the pottery wheel is also not a new thing. It was invented about six to 8,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. I wonder if you can guess uh, where the word throwing comes from. Surely I don't throw a pot. Actually, no. The word throwing comes from the old English word throw an, which actually means to spin. So what we're doing is we're spinning clay and turning it into a pot. I'll give you a little demonstration about that later. Follow me, I want to show you my studio. Come have a look. Welcome to my studio. I'll show you over here, my wheel. And then over here, I've got my glazes at the bottom. And I've got some boxes where various students have sent through their lovely work for glazing and firing. Up here, I've got some work waiting to be glazed. At the top, I've got various different ingredients for making a glaze. And then over here, this little hot thing over here, is my kiln. Um, and that goes up to over 1300 degrees. But if you have a look, oh, currently, it's 571 degrees. It's on a cooling cycle at the moment. And then this is my work table. And down here is my clay store. I've got lots of different types of clay, depending on what it is that I'm making. Next up, I'm going to show you how it is that I throw the base of my mug. The way I work in my studio is, first of all, you start with your raw clay and you make something. You leave it to dry for a little bit and then when it is bone dry, you can then put it in the kiln and um, that first firing is called bisque firing. Bisque firing goes to about a thousand degrees and what it does is it dries everything out. Um, this little penguin guy over here, he's been bisque fired. So these are the boxes that people have dropped off and inside 
they've got some lovely pieces of work. Look, there's a nice little statue inside. I've got a number of little pieces. So now that I've got all of this, I can pop them into the kiln. And this is what it looks like now that it's here. Then I set the kiln and we're A for away. 24 hours later, I can open up the kiln and see what's changed. I take the pieces out and they're ready for glazing. Then what I do, I mix up some liquid glaze and then what I do is I get my pieces and I dip it into that and then I pop it in the, in the kiln. The second firing is the glaze firing and it goes to well over 1200 degrees. And that's quite a hot if you think that you bake a cake at maybe 180 degrees. Once it comes out of the kiln, after that second firing, you can see it's all shiny. And that shininess is brought over by this liquid glass that you put on top. So this is the glaze. Um, I've stored them all in buckets. And you, before you start, you have to stir them for a few minutes first to really mix up all the different ingredients. Then you get your piece and you would dip it in and you'd make sure that it's all nicely covered all the way over. So once you've glazed them, you wait for it to dry and then you can pack your kiln. Once it's on, you set the program to glaze firing and 24 hours later, you can see the results. So this is just showing you what has come out. Um, a lovely smiley plate with some dice, a ship, a leaf, a lovely lady. Look at this whale, some bowls, some beautiful toadstools. There's a spoon rest. Look at these lovely bowls. There's a cat, another lovely bowl. Some more bowls. And then we've got these fish. And we've got this lovely little stamp here with the rose on it. And we carry on round this little fancy sculpture. And these two plates at the back here. Right. So I think that's been quite a successful glaze firing. Well done, you lot. Now there's a couple of really cool things about my job. One of them is meeting children like you um, and getting to play in clay. The other thing around clay is I really like the feel of it, um, the texture, how it squishes, and then what sort of marks it leaves uh, once you've done that. Um, I feel that I can get really expressive and be able to do that. I'll show you these guys here. This one over here, again, is a bit more of a sculpture, but you can see how it's squished and squirted and then um, all pieced together like that. And to me, it just takes the energy from the wheel and turns it into an interesting sculpture. Now I want to tell you a little bit about my latest project, and that is with clay and wildflowers. These are projects which help bees and other pollinators by spreading wildflowers everywhere about your community. Some things I've been doing lately are actually not firing the clay, but making little pieces out of clay, popping in wildflower seeds, and then when they're bone dry, they can go out in the garden and when the rain comes, it'll wash away the clay and then the wild seeds will then sprinkle across the garden and then over the um, summer, uh, wildflower seeds will grow and you'll have little happy bees. And this Easter, I'll be doing a similar project, but this time with statues. So nice chatting to you. I'm going to leave you with this last video of me throwing a slightly bigger pot. Thank you for watching.